Welcome to Table Talk Reviews. In this video, I'll be reviewing and teaching you how to play Steel, a fast-paced word-building game of cunning, treachery, and outright theft for two or more players. Let's go down to the table and show you how to play. To set up the game, flip all the tiles face down. Obviously, they won't be this organized. One player will begin by flipping a single tile, and then the next player will flip another tile, and then this continues around the table until there are at least three tiles revealed. Players should continue flipping tiles rather quickly, maximum three seconds between each tile. Once there are at least three, players can shout out words using those letters to spell words such as gum. Flipping of the tiles stops momentarily as the player gathers up their letters and rearranges them in front of them. It's important to note that although flipping tiles stops, the ability to steal never stops. So if players are flipping tiles, and we keep flipping tiles, and then this player shouts out pod, and they start gathering their letters, I can notice, oh, pond, and steal that from them before they've even added it to their play area. As with most word games, you cannot use proper nouns or abbreviations specific to steal, is that you cannot spell any plurals ending in S and no verbs ending in S. So if an S letter was revealed, they would not be able to simply steal gum by saying gums. But they could, however, say smug, and they would probably be extra smug in stealing this word from me. The player who just claimed a word flips the next tile, and this continues until all letters have been used or until all tiles have been flipped, but no more words can be formed or stolen. Mug. Gum. If two players ever claim valid words at the same time, flip the most recently revealed tile face down, mix it back in, and then continue revealing tiles. The mask tile is wild. It can be used as any letter, and when stealing, it can change to any letter. In this case, it could be used as an S to spell last, and then when stolen, I could change it to an N with this P to spell plant. The 10 colored tiles are the same as any other letter, except that they double the value of their word during scoring. To score your words at the end of the game, the first three letters of each word score one point, and every letter after that is an additional point. Pond is one, two points. Subscribe, you know you want to, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Words with these colored tiles will score double. So in this case, there's one colored tile. This would normally be worth one point. It's now worth two points. So when you have two of them, you basically count it again for each colored tile. So if there were no colored tiles, lawn would be worth two points, and then it's worth another two, and then another two for a total of six points. On the off chance you're ever able to get steel in all colored letters, you just simply win the game. It doesn't matter that this is only worth 15 points, the impossibility of getting all the colored letters and spelling steel is so rare that you immediately win the game. Steel ended up being just okay for me. I tend to have a problem with games that have you flipping cards or tiles at a fast pace because players inevitably end up complaining that, oh, when you flip it, I can't see it, or you're flipping too slowly. You just have to flip as fast as possible. The logistics of finding the perfect flip is impossible and it just makes the game a hassle. The other thing I found slightly annoying was the S rule. It totally makes sense that you should not be able to steal words by just tacking an S onto the end of them. But when you're just using letters from the center of the table and not stealing words, it feels limiting that you can't use a word that ends in an S. You can also steal words by just adding a Y to the end of them, and that isn't prevented by the rules, 
but I'm limited to words that end in an S because I guess that was the most obvious possibility, feels a bit annoying to me. I get it because it's totally undeserved to just tack a single letter onto a word and not change it whatsoever. I'm totally fine with someone adding a bunch of letters and rearranging them. Like, they bested me. They spotted something I didn't see. It feels like they deserve that word and those points. The other problem with steel is that it can come to an awkward ending. The rules say that it ends when all of the letters are used or all the tiles have been flipped and no one can think of a word anymore. No one. So that inevitably leads to players saying, oh, I'm still thinking, and everyone is just, you know, staring at other people's words, trying to think, okay, there's an N. What word can I add an N to? And you just assess every single word one by one, and that is no fun. It just bogs down, comes to a complete halt at the end, there should be a specific rule for some amount of time, like after the last tile is flipped, players have 15 seconds, and then we go to scoring. Now, the obvious comparison here is Bananagrams. I personally prefer Bananagrams because it's a lot more relaxing, players can't steal your tiles, and you can still get some satisfaction by building a nice crossword even if you lose. But if you want a more interactive and highly competitive Bananagrams, then Steel is that game. Gamers might find some minor gripes with it like I did, but families and casual party gamers will still find it perfectly enjoyable. That's all for this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more board game videos to come.